Oh my d If Barack Obama and Donald Trump had a baby together, what would that baby look like? He'd look like this, and if I'm gonna be honest, he already looks better than me. But how did this happen? And why are there two fathers? It's time to find out. Hi everyone, I'm Carrie, and my knees hurt. For my CS229 final project, I trained an autoencoder on 13,000 celebrity headshots from FamousBirthdays.com. And then I used something called principal component analysis on the encodings to create a slider-based face editing tool like you might see in The Sims. This will allow us to change celebrities' facial expressions, apply makeup to them, and predict what their babies will look like. But if you want to know the math behind PCA, check out Code Parade's video, he explains it really well. But I'm guessing you just want to see the face editor, so let's jump into it! Given all these thousands of images, what do you think the ultimate average of everything is? What face emerges when you combine every singer, every movie actor, every politician, and every uh, TikTok star? Well, it looks like... This. This face here is pretty symmetrical and well proportioned, which is a good sign. But in my opinion, it looks a lot more feminine than masculine, which confused me because it should look 50-50 androgynous. But then if you analyze the Famous Birthdays website, you can see there's a lot more girls than boys. <laughs> so that might describe the imbalance. This average face here is crucial to know because it serves as our starting point and every other face will just branch off of it. Specifically, there are 300 such branches that all move out in perpendicular directions. But we want to know what the longest branch is. In other words, what trait about all these celebrities has the largest effect on the pixels of the image? Well, pixel difference is measured in RGB brightness, so it might not be surprising that the first component of PCA is just the shading of the image. This makes sense because all 4096 pixels can be turned from close to the absolute minimum to close to the absolute maximum color values with just this slider, so of course this slider is going to have the biggest influence. Now at first I thought this was the skin tone of the celebrity, and you might think so too, but for reasons I'll explain later, I think it's more about the lighting of the environment, which you can tell with the background also getting lighter and darker. What's the second strongest component? In other words, the trait that had the second most effect on the pixel's brightness? Well this is the one that I would say is the celebrity's skin tone. And you can see that as the skin tone of the celebrity gets darker, the background gets brighter, and vice versa which means that you can no longer use this color constancy idea in your brain that the whole environment is just getting darker or brighter. So now, okay, PCA chooses its components to all be linearly independent, which means they form right angles and essentially you can create any combination of two of them and it should still make logical sense, which means that we can now create a light-skinned person in a light room, we can create a dark-skinned person in a light room, we can create a dark skinned person in a dark room, and we can create a light skinned person in a dark room. That's pretty cool that all four situations look very reasonable. Anyway, I know you just want to see what the next components are, so let's get to it. PCA3. Okay, think to yourself, real hard, if we've already covered brightness of the image and skin tone, what's the next thing that's going to affect a ton of pixels in the image? I'll let you think for a bit, but I don't think you're going to get it because this component is horizontal shading. This really blew me away because it looks like it's rotating in 3D, but these images are literally two-dimensional data structures, which means the algorithm, again, knows nothing about the third dimension. Yet we can see the shading on the nose perfectly align with the shading in the background as if it's like one coherent 3D image. But moving on to the fourth component, now I'm actually going to go over this one quickly because it's pretty boring. It's literally just horizontal shading again, which might confuse you. It confused me. Like, why would you need two traits to encode the same thing? Well, it's kind of not the same thing because if you drag them both to kind of counteract each other in this way, the person's looking straight on because they cancel out. But look, the background's dark, almost black. 
Yet if you drag them in the other direction so they cancel out in the other way, the person's looking straight at you again, but we have a light colored background. So there must be something going on when you add these two so that they aren't exact opposites. But either way, we don't really need to care about that because we still haven't gotten to any of the components that actually affect the structure of someone's face. And believe me, they're coming. So PCA5, what is it? Actually, I've forgotten myself too, but if I do this, I'll probably remember. Oh right, it's it's vertical shading. So we need to have all directions of shading so you can like create shading from the lower right or the upper left. You know, this is a really nice example because it's a good way of physically showing how all components are perpendicular to each other. Honestly, I think it'd just be fun to hook up a joystick to this and play around with the shading in all directions. But that's so much work. Okay. PCA6, I know what this one is because it's one of my favorite ones to toy around when I'm actually messing with celebrity images. It's the temperature of the image. What do I mean? Well, if we want this person to seem warmer, let's just heat her up. And let's make her colder now. So we're going from red, redder images, which just feel cozier, and blue images, which feel icier. I also noticed that as you get colder, the eyebrows move up. So the fact that these two are related might say something about like, if you are in a colder location, maybe your eyes open wider. That's a lot of speculation. What's PCA7? Oh, it's it's more horizontal shading. Okay, forget that. Uh, PCA8. Before I reveal it, I want to remind you that none of these sliders effects were picked by a human. They were merely a mathematical consequence of the dataset. That's why the fact that PC6 pinpoints just color correction is so surprising to me. Math did it, and math doesn't even know what it's like to see color. This one is... Oh, okay, PC8 is also lighting. This is more about the contrast of the lighting of the face. So if they're in a room that has a lot of diffuse lighting coming from all directions, or maybe like a cloudy day, they would look like this. And you can see that their eye sockets aren't super shaded because light is coming in the direction that will light them up. But then, say they step into a dim doctor's office with only a single light from above. Suddenly, there are dark, deep shadows around the person's eyes, and contouring their face. So you can think of this as like ambient occlusion like in Minecraft because I play Minecraft. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut that out. Anyway, PCA9. What is that? I don't know actually. I guess I could say it's distance between the eyes. Future carry here. I've since concluded that PC9 affects the strength of the shadow along the head's perimeter, although a side effect is the movement of eyes. Here's more about eye movement. PCA10 though, this one is eyebrow height which I think is super important because if you find someone's face and just change their eyebrow height, they look like an entirely different person. And I think that on average, women have higher eyebrows. So when I drag it this way, it starts to look more feminine. Now, before I fixed a fatal bug with my eigenvector eigenvalue calculation, gender was actually the most important component. And that kind of made sense to me because when you look at an actor or a singer, the first thing you notice is their gender. But then I thought about it and like, whether someone's male or female, it doesn't make that much of a difference, especially when it comes to the pixel brightnesses. So now that everything's fixed, it makes more sense that gender doesn't show up until the 10th component. And how much is it showing up? Well, this number here on the right, you can see it says 0 0.501. That's the eigenvalue, which is a fancy way of saying the variance or change in pixel brightness this slider will affect. All right, so now that we've finished the first 10 components, the next components are going to alter less and less of the image, so I'll go over them quickly. PCA11 is horizontal shading. PCA12 is... Oh, it's actually how much makeup is on the person. Wow. Now I said I was going to be quick with explaining these things, but this one's just too fun to pass up. So one thing that's really fun about this makeup slider is that you can see that the lipstick and the eyeshadow come in at the same time. Which makes sense because in the data set, someone who has lots of eyeshadow is likely to also have put on lipstick, so they are very highly correlated. But trust me, this is going to come in handy when we start bringing in the YouTubers. What's PCA13? More horizontal shading. What about PCA14? That's head width. Do you have a horse face or a pumpkin face? What's PCA15? That's right, the smile. It makes sense that smiling isn't correlated with any of the other features because celebrities of all face structures and environments can smile or frown. Hi, I have a $10 million mansion. But stalkers will make rumors about your sex life. What's PCA16? Vertical rotation. What's PCA17? It's more eyebrow height. What about PCA18? More horizontal shading. What's PCA19? How shaded the eyes are. This is kind of similar to PCA8, which kind of did the same thing, but if you look at PCA8, it's adding shadows and harsh lighting to the entire face, whereas PCA19 seems to just be the eyes. What's PCA20? 
It's another smile component, but I'd say it's very different from PCA15, the first smile one. Cause look at PCA15, it's hardly affecting the eyes at all. It's what you'd call a smile for the photographs, but if you're actually happy, then your cheeks start to rise too, and look at the eyes this time. I guess it's just natural for your eyes to go squinty when you're laughing really hard. <laughs> Actually, I can scroll past the end point with my scroll wheel, so let's make him go even more squinty. Whoa, Thanos, what are you doing here? You weren't invited? Now I don't feel so good. Okay, there are 300 components in all, but by the time you get to rank about 150, they start to have so little effect on the image that they don't even count. Like, this is 140 already and it has almost no effect. Let's just scroll down a little bit to get to PCA 21. What is it? It's red-green color correction, which under certain color spaces is perpendicular to the yellow-blue one from before. What about PCA22? Let's get another smile up in here! Okay, we have three smile vectors now, and they're all adding up to make this really intense smile, but what if we invert them all? Oh god, hmm, I wonder what PCA23 is. It's another smile vector? Why are there so many of these? Four smile vectors on? Four smile vectors off. What's PCA24? Eye size. What's PCA25? Eyebrow density? Although other components affect this as well. What's PCA26? Neck width. Okay, there are more interesting components, but we gotta move on. The last component I want to show you is PCA32, which is jaw location. Chew your food, Timmy, or else you'll swallow too much like I should've done! Now let's look through some other features, like this randomize button. This will set each slider to a random location on a normal distribution curve, giving us a distribution of entirely new faces that the algorithm thinks matches the same distribution as the actual celebrity images. These faces are completely artificial, no one actually owns them, but they're showing what celebrities could look like if we lived in a different universe. Perhaps the celebrities of the 22nd century, who knows? Now let's do something a little more challenging. Let's think of a real-life celebrity, like Johnny Depp or Betty White, and try to adjust the sliders to replicate their face as close as possible. Which real-life celebrity should we pick? I'm gonna pick Ariana Grande, cause she's been here all night, she's been here all day, and she's been walking side to side. So what do we know about Ariana? Well, the first component doesn't matter because it's lighting, but the second one is skin tone, and well, I know there's been a bit of a controversy about her and that, so let's just leave it somewhere in the middle. Three and four are lighting, so I can skip, skip them. Five is lighting, six is temperature. I think Ariana's skin tone is a little yellower than normal, but if I'm honest, it's gonna be hard to shift her facial structures to make it look like her. So let's use my new feature over here where you can literally just type in someone's name and hit enter, boom, that's Ariana right there. And this is like a cheat cheat, because it sets all the sliders to exactly what they need to be to form an Ariana face. So, you know what's coming next. We gotta play around with her face. So here's what she looks like in daylight, but here's what she looks like at nighttime. And, I mean, uh, you can also change her skin tone. Hold on, before we can see the modified Ariana, let's hear a word from our sponsor. I'm guessing you want to learn what she'd look like, but to be honest, there's so much else to learn. In fact, there's so much stuff to learn that you could learn something new every day. So at some point, you'll have to turn to this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. They've got these new daily problems that can teach you things that I didn't know such as how a teaspoon of a neutron star would interact with Earth. Each problem provides you with the context and framework that you need to tackle it, so that you learn the concepts by applying them. If you like the daily problem, then there's more like it in the quiz on the left, so that you can explore the concept in great detail and develop your framework. But what if you're confused? Don't worry! The community's got your back, discussing how they would solve the same problem. So that means they all have teaspoons of neutron stars in their pockets? I sure hope not! Anyway, these thought-provoking challenges will lead you from curiosity to mastery one day at a time. So what are you waiting for? Go to brilliant.org slash carrykh and finish your day a little smarter. And the first 200 of you to do so will get 20% off the annual subscription to view all problems in the archives. And, yes, last time I incorrectly claimed that decimating something twice is the same as 20% off, which it's not. 
And yes, I did get dozens of angry comments about it, and I'm sorry. But anyway, back to the face editing tool. What would Ariana look like? Actually, just kidding. This video is too long. So our face editing baby predicting adventures will have to continue in part two. See you then. So I think it's just human nature to want to know what your opposite self is. So I'm going to click invert. Essentially, she's the light to my dark, the cold to my warmth. PewDiePie has almost no makeup on, which I think is accurate, but we can change that. Oh yeah, who is she? 